it's a pleasure to, to follow these readings and meet other poets. Um, just be back in poetry, I guess, after quite a long break, and then the pandemic has got me writing again, uh, which is you know, kind of culminated in being here today. So thank you to everyone involved in the prize and Peter Sir, the judge, and all the people behind the scenes who do the work. Uh, I once read about 2000 kids poems for a shortlist for Roger McGough. So I know, I know there's quite a lot of work that goes into uh, to running, a, running a competition. Um, I'll read the prize winning poem. This is Concerto. He'll go down the canal and get plastered on a Sunday, knocking back a bottle of bootleg vodka that looks like water and tastes like thinners. For the first hour, he'll be comprehensible and talk with pride about when he used to work at Imperial Typewriter and drank pints of mild in smoky pubs, but only on a Friday. He'll tell you about the strike in 74 and the picket line of saris screaming at the police. And from the way he talks and looks into the depth of the log, or at the bottom of the plastic cup that his mate Mukesh brings along in a battered carrier bag, you'd think he had sight into sunken worlds. But after half a bottle, the stories become fables or lies, depending on how you define fairy tales of alcohol and loss. He'll tell you that he once rescued a woman and a child from a burning house in Braunston, and that the worst thing he ever did was to sprint across six lanes of a motorway just to prove that he wasn't afraid. Still, what I want to walk away with today along the towpath speckled with leaves is how he used to solder the typefaces onto the key levers, and that he would test the strength and accuracy of his weld by tapping out each letter against the platen only signing off his work on a certain perfect note. Um, I, I wrote that on a kind of day when I despaired and I just wanted, to, I needed to get something out of the day um, to kind of get me through it, I guess. So I'm very glad it's, it's got me to this point uh, and being here, but it's, yeah. Um, the other poem I'd like to read was kind of a, one of these poems that got me back writing again. And this one was published in the New European. Um, it's about, it's a lockdown poem, but it's about reading. It's about escape and it's about the joy of, of, of reading. Northern Light. My latest escape plan is to fly over the Pacific Northwest in a single prop plane that valiantly battles the polar wind. I'll land on the gravel bar of a glacial river and stake claim to a plot of woodland with a log cabin sturdy enough to keep out bears and wolves. My ax will tring in the morning quiet. There will be treks across meadows of white through pine trees ruffled in snow. Perhaps I'll walk out onto a frozen lake listening for that heart-stopping sound like a steel cable snapping. But the ice will hold my weight. With a gloved hand, I'll wipe it clear so I can look down and shudder. Then back to the hearth where I'll read Jack London and Cormac McCarthy, the Wyoming stories of Annie Prue, tales about lives set against the cold, the Arctic night on a page that glows by a single bulb where the black type is anthracite and the word spark fire. 